A great way to give your brain some exercise is to learn something new. And when you're young, you're learning something new all the time. At school, at daycare, at kohanga reo, at play centre, you're learning all the time. When you're old, you don't need to learn anything anymore. You've learnt it all. Not. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter what age you are, it really pays to learn something new every day if you can. It doesn't have to be a really hard something, it can be really simple. Remember yesterday, Noah showed us the different brains that the Centre for Brain Research have in their labs. We learnt which one was the human brain and that the brain of the human adult is bigger than the brain of a monkey's, a cat's and a rat's. Of course, we don't go walking around with our brain exposed all day. Well, that would be ridiculous. It wouldn't be protected. What our brains need is a hard layer of protection. Our skull. That's a good start, but what it also needs is something else, and that something is cerebral spinal fluid. Well, today Noah's come back, and this time he wants to show us one of his favourite experiments. What's this experiment all about, Noah? It's about if you're, like, jumping on a tramp and you don't have any cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid. That's really important, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what have you got there? A brain and a skull. Okay, now the brain doesn't normally sit outside the skull, does it? No, okay. Okay. Nice and gently. Then we do the skull up nice and tight. Can't have that brain escaping. And what you're going to do is show us what it's like to bounce on the trampoline. Yeah. Without cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, here goes. Oh, okay, what happened to our brain? We died. Oh, we certainly did. Far out. So that wasn't even really hard jumping on the trampoline. Imagine if you'd fallen off a bike or something like that without any cerebral spinal fluid. We'd better see what happens with cerebral spinal fluid. So did you bring some with you? Yeah. Okay, let's grab it. That isn't really cerebral spinal fluid, is it? No. No, what is it? It's water. Okay, but it's going to work just the same. Here we go. Brain lowered into the water. Great. Is there enough water in there? Yep. Perfect. Skull tightened nice and tight. And you're going to bounce on the trampoline again? Yep. Okay. What happens when you shake it a bit more violently? Wow, the brain's hardly even moving. Can I have a go at shaking it? Right. I'll try it like this. You ready? So the brain's moving around a bit, but not very much at all. And that's one of the roles of the cerebral spinal fluid. But it does a lot more. Hey, thanks for that, Noah. That's a really cool experiment. Something that anybody could try at home. Cool. Now that's just one of the reasons why we have cerebral spinal fluid in our head. It helps protect our brains up to a point. But it can't protect our brains from everything. So that's why we have bike helmets when we're on a bike and hard hats when we're on a construction site or around something which could potentially damage our head. When we're doing everyday normal old activities, cerebral spinal fluid does the trick. Well, there you go. You learnt something new today. Well, hopefully. And if you already knew that, you're now ready to learn something else new. So head to susie.co.nz and check out the fact sheets from the Susie's World programme or head along to your local brain day, brainweek.co.nz. See ya. Remember, if you're enjoying these clips, like, subscribe, maybe even share. And we'll have a new guest next week. For more information, head to susie.co.nz.